Another morning of getting kids up and fed and ready for school. Are you almost done? It's a ritual we've all been through thousands of times. But for the Lunas who lived just outside paradise, the ritual has changed after a disaster they couldn't possibly have prepared for. Mom, dad, the kids, and the pets are living about 20 miles away with another family in a Chico home that had space for them all. Learning to share your home with other adults is pretty difficult. We all have different habits and we cook different ways and different food and we just have to be careful not to step on each other's toes. Sharing space and creating new habits became necessary in November of 2018 when the deadliest and most destructive fire in California history killed 86 people and destroyed more than 18,000 homes and other buildings in Butte County. It was called the Campfire. This is where the Lunas lived, near Paradise, a town of more than 26,000 people. Very few people live in and around Paradise now. No one who was in the path of the Campfire will ever forget the morning of November 8th. When we could see the, the smoke and the flames and that we were getting kids onto campus uh, where some of the drivers were saying, you know, they're driving through flames to get to school. The fire trucks were pulling up. You could hear explosions and get out, get out, get out. It was taking over the entire horizon. There was no confusion that it was a huge fire and it was coming. There was ash and debris falling everywhere and Actually, when I was walking to my first period class, I saw someone write on the walls in ash, this is the end. The temporary Paradise High School is in a Chico office building once used by Facebook. The temporary intermediate school is in what used to be an orchard supply hardware store, also in Chico. The school office is where customer service handled returns, Lunch is served where customers paid at check stands five and six. And the school library, with thousands of donated books, is in the middle of the old store, an aisle over from where paint was sold. It's actually been fine because we have a lot of space to use. You just have to be a little creative with it. Um, it's been kind of fun, actually. I always just tell everybody you can find the library on aisle 16. The principal's office is up front, right next to double glass doors. Chris Dunlap spends time every now and then reminding shoppers Orchard Supply isn't here anymore. You know, I'll step outside and go, yeah, we're at school now. We don't have, you know, I was just coming in for light bulbs. No, no, no light bulbs here. So that's been kind of fun. Finding fun and humor is important for Chris because as she says, we wouldn't make it otherwise. Think of just how much trauma the people of paradise have experienced. An estimated 75% of these kids lost their homes and are living in a new community and makeshift housing. About half the staff at these schools are also fire victims. It was important for districts to locate and organize school sites as soon as possible, so at least something in these students' lives seemed normal. For them to know that, you know, I'm going to see this person and they're going to teach me math. I'm going to see this person and they're going to teach me science. Um, you know, this is, is predictable when nothing else is. They might be in a trailer for three weeks and then they get an apartment. They might, you know, be in a hotel. Some, we still have students in hotels. Returning to a school setting was the first step. Remembering what they've been through came next. I'm really big on, I need to cover the curriculum. Like, I'm, I want to get stuff done. And we quickly realized that that's not the priority here. We qu quickly realized that the priority is checking in with kids and making sure that they're, that they're ready to move on. And I took baby steps. Um, uh, that first day back, it wasn't about lecturing on meiosis. It was about, how is everybody? We're back together. This is different. Let's talk about how this is different. Good morning, Bobcats. Today is Wednesday. Jace is a junior. He hopes to be an actor. He wasn't impressed when he learned the Facebook building was now his high school. 
Wow, this is small and cramped. With nearly 500 students at this site, it is cramped. The warehouse space became classrooms, and the cafeteria became a basketball court and the band room. For Jace, it hasn't been the smoothest transition. My grades have dropped since the fire. Last semester I had straight A's, and now I have a D in one of my classes. It just feels a lot harder to focus here. These elementary age kids were lucky. An older school that wasn't being used was reopened, so their transition was easier. Still, because of their age and because 85% of the kids from Concal Elementary lost homes, a service dog is now on campus to help work on any possible mental health issues. Some kids won't see a counselor, but a lot of kids will pet a dog, look in a dog's eyes, you know, um, give a dog a treat, you know, and, and in that way, they're able to kind of feel normal or maybe just feel at ease here at school. Just looking in a dog's eyes for a few seconds feels like a hug. Josh Pete says so many of his kids now live in trailers that on stormy nights, and there have been many, find sleep difficult and learning drops off the next day. That's an issue at schools throughout Butte County, where 150,000 acres burned. We've had everything from kids reporting that they can't sleep at night, or as soon as they fall asleep, they're having nightmares about what they've experienced. They have trouble concentrating. We are seeing behaviors escalating in certain situations, um, and students just generally feeling like their lives are out of control. It's not a surprise that students who are fire victims are struggling months later. It's actually expected because strong support that arrives early on eventually tapers off. I think there's that initial, wow, everybody's here to help us, the media's here and all that, well, everybody's gone, right? And now you're faced the reality of living either in a temporary home, a mobile home, some are still living in hotels. Tim Taylor was superintendent of county schools when the campfire happened. He's now retired, but he's still following school issues closely. We're seeing uh, behaviors of children about four months after the fire that um, are very serious. Um, it includes the teachers, the parents, and the kids because you start to lose hope, and that really kicks in. And I think children that, like, for instance, had anxiety prior to the fire, and now it's multiplied by 10. It's in the mental health field that support can still be offered to people who lost homes and businesses in the Paradise Fire. The number one need is an ongoing need for mental health supports. So that, that will not go away for years to come. So people can write a check, but if they themselves are retired professionals and want to volunteer and want to be vetted to be allowed to come and work in the schools, we have a pathway for doing that. Perhaps no one in Butte County has a better view of all the hurdles than Shawnee. Because after she gets her kids out of the house and off to school, that's where she ends up as well as a substitute teacher. There's not a part of the day she's not reminded of the fire, living in borrowed space at night, or trying during the day to make a difference in the lives of kids who lost their homes too. If there's anything the rest of us can do, she says it's to never forget what happened in paradise. It's not just our, we had a fire. We lost our community. We lost our sports programs. We lost everything that we knew every day. And to not forget about us is the biggest thing. Keep us in your prayers, keep us in your thoughts, keep checking on us, see what we need um, as a community and as individuals. It's really important. There's a lot of loss here and a lot of people who were not prepared. People have donated more than $1 million to a long-term recovery fund set up for Butte County Schools. Money from the fund will be used to restore programs at schools, that includes mental health services, after school programs, tutoring and other activities to create a positive school climate. More information is available from the Butte County Office of Education.